Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I've got some gumballs. I'm going to add a random color texture to them via Octane for Moto. They are rather giant gumballs. I noticed when I got my four texture on there, they're about a foot across, but we're just going to keep calling them gumballs because I'm stuck on it. Okay, we've got a nice complex piece of geometry there for the floor, a plane, and a plane for the uh, back wall. Let's just take a look at the workspace real quick. Um, what is that doing there, little bastard? Uh, so we've got a service particle generator. We've got the four, I'm sorry, feeding into the uh, service particle generator, uh, which gives us a nice control for average spacing of the gumballs, feeding into a replicator. Uh, the surface particle generator is giving each of these um, replicas a particle ID, each of our gumballs here. This is our, our gumball right there. Um, and that particle ID is going to be made available to the Octane renderer via a special Octane node, which I will get to in two seconds. One, two. Okay, so click on this guy and we are in the uh, shading network for the gumball. I do have a bit of a bump map on here going into this uh, Octane Glossy material. Let me just scooch this up. I have a little more room to work with here. Get that guy there. Um, and I think I've got a bit of a roughness texture as well, just a little smudgy texture. And right now I've got this Pixel Fondue image right here as a diffuse texture. But I'm going to unplug the Pixel Fondue image and move that to the side just like a bowl of sauce for the later part of the cooking episode and I'm going to select my diffuse um, channel here and go to new texture and mapping and gradient 2. Gradient 2 in my opinion better than gradient 1 because this guy um, gradient 1 just basically lets you interpolate between two colors while gradient 2 gives you this uh, full gradient uh, uh, graph here to work with a standard modo, modo gradient tab tab, editor, gradient editor, I guess is what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna middle click for a new key on the gradient editor and make that red. And then I'm going to make this one yellow. And behold, I have orange for everything. So why is that? Why are all these balls basically orange? Not basically orange, literally orange, like 50% orange? Because they'll have a particle ID of 0.5. That's all Octane has seen right now. What we need to do is plug an octane node into this input uh, channel right here so it gets the correct particle ID for each of these gumballs here. So new texture, generator, random color texture, very appropriately named. And now we have a particle ID going into this octane shading network and it's getting um, a color from this gradient. So basically, I keep saying basically when I mean literally, literally how this works is the um, particle ID is on the bottom axis here, axis here, and then of course the gradient, you know, just, you know, if you have a particle ID of like 0.3 or 30%, you're right there, you get a nice yellow, and it's just um, going along the gradient here. So if I, you know, middle click and add a few more keys here and select them and say make uh, blue and, um, I don't know, fuchsia, and we'll keep this orange, maybe a little bit more intense orange. Then again, it's going across the whole bottom here, but I'm getting some like washed out kind of ugly gumballs, you know, the kind you give to your little brother because you don't want them. Those guys are in here. And one way to avoid that and just get the colors I'm laying down on the on the line here is to go over to the, um, in, in the Moto node, you would use uh, stepped interpolation like that. And Octane has that its own step interpolation here for its gradient. So you click that to make sure you got it right. And then you can, you know, adjust these around a little bit. If you, you know, I like that orange color there, I think a little bit better than the uh, purple. And let's move red in to capture some of those particle IDs in the higher range. Drag it down a bit, get a red, not that many reds. It's one of the things with the random particle ID is, you know, it's random. So. <laughs> might end up with a lot of red. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just going to do that and move on. We'll worry about aesthetics later. So how do I get the uh, Pixel Fondue logo back? Kind of like a stamp on the gumball. Well, let me show you. Let's unplug the gradient and move that to the side. Back to plain old boring white. Grab our sauce over here, the Pixel Fondue logo network and move that over. Select our diffuse channel and I'm going to do new texture mapping mix and you will see we've got a mix node here for the second texture let's plug our gradient 
you notice it's very washed out because right now what's happening is um, the first texture just defaults to white and we have an amount set to 0.5. So right now it's mixing 0.5 in with our gradient. So if I set all that all the way up to one, we get our full gradient, full saturated uh, gradient there. If we go to zero, I get white for everything. What I want to do, of course, is drive the amount with that black and white pixel fondue logo. So this is going to drive the amount. Let me just push this over here so we can see it while I do this. So I plug this into the amount and you'll notice that um, a couple things. One, I want to make sure the power is set to one. So it's full on white and not uh, some wussy partly white. And you'll notice that in the white, I'm getting the second texture and in the black, I'm getting the first texture, which defaults to white, but I'm going to actually do a new texture. And let's just make this, we can make it anything we want, anything in the whole world. We can make it this color, or we can just make it black, which I think looks better. Turn the saturation down, black, sort of black, almost black, near black. That looks okay, all right. Looking good, but Greg, you ask, what about some scratches or something to make it look less perfect and CG? Okay, so let's take a look at how to do that. So again, I think I'm going to unplug my um, pixel fondue texture from there right now, and I'm actually gonna plug it back into the diffuse amount just so we can see what's going on. Basically, we want this mask, or literally, we want this mask to include some scratches. So I've got some scratches, so let me actually select diffuse and, and show the uh, scratch texture. So let's go new texture, um, grayscale image, and so we've got our, see this is why the shader tree is so nice. You don't have to constantly do this. Um, move these nodes up here, I know, all you guys. But nodes, nodes are the best. Now there's a bug in Octane I noticed, like notice how this projection that came in with this new image did not hook up to the projection uh, slot here. It should be like this. What it did, the little bastard, is it kicked out my previous projection right here, which was um, converted. This is a Moto Texture Locator that was converted when I added the Octane Override. And it booted that out and that's a bug Paul, if you're watching this, you might want to check into that bug right there. But so right now we're okay. We're just uh, back to um, looking at my scratches. So closing this, do I have scratches? Do I need to load scratches? I think I need to add a scratch clip. So load, I think on my desktop I had some sweet, sweet scratches. There they are. Here's my scratches. Add, this, add the image to the schematic. Plug the file name into the file name. And we have scratches. Should we make that more scratches? Yeah, so 50, Control, Alt, Enter. Let's get some more scratches on there. Okay, so we need to combine that with this somehow to give us a good mat. We really only want those scratches. We want the white of the scratches to be within the Pixel Fondue logo. Right? So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of compositing tricks with this is Photoshop you can do it real quickly. In Octane, I am going to use a subtract texture. So diffuse is selected, new texture, and mapping and subtract texture. So I got a subtract texture. And let's add a texture one and texture two. So we've got this guy texture two and this guy texture one. And let me actually flip them around until I get what I want. Okay, so right now I'm subtracting that, those white scratches from the white Pixel Fondue, but that's sort of the opposite of what I want. I actually want the Pixel Fondue to be inverted like this. And then I, you can see I've got those white scratches subtracted from the white Pixel Fondue. Okay, so now I have a scratchy Pixel Fondue logo. Exactly what I want. And I'm going to pump that back into the amount of my original mix and plug my original mix back into Diffuse and it's gonna be perfect, right? No. <laughs> I have colored logos and a black gumball, but that's easy, right? All I have to do is switch my first and second texture right here by doing this. So let's put our gradient back into first texture and our color back into second texture. And boom, there we are. Looks pretty sweet. We've got scratchy, realistic scratches on our Pixel Fondue logo and uh, random color textures on our gumballs. And I'm going to crank depth the field up like crazy just for fun and call this a day. So aperture. Now, 
Octane typically defaults to use moto f-stop for aperture as the um, checked. So if you're ever wondering why you can't control the aperture, you uncheck that. Glory be, there is an aperture channel now. Let's move this up to like two. Get some crazy depth of field to highlight that orange one right there. I think that looks terrible. Let's do one. And uh, yeah, good enough for government work, as they say. Okay, that's it. Enjoy your giant gumballs. Yum, yum!